All right, everybody, welcome to the King Mexico podcast. And then today's guest we have, please, sir, let the public know who you are. This is Casquillo. Uh, you may have seen some of my videos explaining some of the going ons of the narco world. Yeah, man, I've been following you for a while, bro. Like, I like <clears throat> all your videos are so into, like, so in debt, like the way you start to the finish and stuff. And I'm like, yo, how do you get all this type of stuff? It's like, yo, bro, like when you really break it down and you watch one of the videos, even the last one you had with Polo, it's short, but you go into depth. Yeah. Um. Well, it's it's different different ways I get the info uh some some of it comes from people i've come into contact over the years and i kept in in touch with uh some of the other info comes from court documents and then the other type of info i mean there's different types of avenues i don't want to get into specifics but you know it's different types they come they come along yeah yeah Nah, I could see like you do your research deep and however you get it. At the end of the day, the product that you produce is incredible, bro. Like there's nobody out there that's really up to your level from what I've seen and the people I follow. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And then a lot of people sleep on your page because I see on your um on your grand page, not you know, you don't have the followers, but then on your YouTube you do. And people people don't understand like what you do. I understand your videos take a little bit longer sometimes to um come out with and i can understand your research and everything you put into it i can understand it takes a while probably to get so much information yeah um, yeah that i'm sorry sorry to cut you off no no that's cool um but yeah it takes a bit of time to do this because um i try to put out info that is accurate uh that is pretty detailed and sometimes i'll have some a project done and what will happen is i'll get new info and it will change something up in the storyline and then something won't make sense so i have to go back and do a a double check uh the other reason for that for taking a while is you know i'm the only person uh basically doing this you know um and doing the research, doing the the animation or the the graphics, the the audio, everything. So it does take a bit of time. Uh, so I could understand some people's frustration with it, but I expect it to to be to uh, the problem to alleviate uh, pretty soon. Now nah, the product, yeah. like I said, man, your videos are dope. I didn't even know you do the illustrations too, which is crazy. Your graphics are like they're there i'm like yo now knowing all this other stuff is crazy bro like damn yeah you really don't in yeah um yeah i do the graphics uh actually that's kind of how i got into this whole thing because i did a, some graphic design work for someone in the in the corrido world and i kept in touch with that person and you know through certain contexts you come into certain info and so yeah graphic design uh, i do the audio work and you know it's a one-man band nah that's so cool like i said man i admire you bro you're probably one of the per- people that have influenced me and to get into this whole podcast joint because i follow, like i said i've been following you for a while and then you know this whole covid hit and it woke me up. It's like, yo, I got to stop thinking about, oh, I'm going to do it. 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 And I was like, yo, it's time to start, you know, shifting gears and start making sure that I, you know, what I wanted to do is going out into the world now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I had this, the whole idea for this channel, I actually had for a while. Uh, but I just never, you know, I had a, a regular nine to five and for the longest you know when you do that it's like well i got this going on i got your your family and stuff but this idea has been in my head for a while to just put this info out there that i feel the the mainstream media doesn't really uh 
get to dive into a lot of times, you know. And I just wanted to put that info out there, but in a non boring way, I guess you could say, like in a, I guess to put it in a story uh, format where it's easy to follow and easy on the ears, I guess. I mean, at least that's the goal. Nah, man, like I said, man, I just keep on sounding like a record right now. You're just at the end of the day, the product you come, you know, you put out is, you know, immaculate. There's nobody out there who's doing it like you, man. There's people who Thank try. You. There's people who uh -huh. try, but don't get up to your level. Like the graphics, the way you speak the story from beginning to start. Right, right, the right. The sound. Thank like you. people Thank would you. do it. Like people do it. There's other people who doing it who speak. But then their sound is off. This is off. Then then they don't have the animation. Then the information is jumping here to there, and it's not correct. So at the end of the day, what you're doing, bro, <laughs> is completely, completely different, authentic, and a hundred percent real. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted this to be definitely something that, you know, someone uh, the in the average viewer, I guess you could say going through YouTube can click on this and hear something completely different than what they would expect from an English, I guess you could say, uh, YouTube focused channel. And because, uh, yeah, you're right. There are other channels out there that kind of do the same thing, but I feel like maybe sometimes they don't put in certain details into it. And, you know, I also enjoy when I go and watch something, I like to, it's cool to see certain graphics. I like to see something interesting on the screen, you know? So I felt like, well, if I can make this, then why not? I'll, I'll put in the graphics. Tell me about it. And yo, how do you feel about shows that like Netflix got in other, um, in other networks that are currently have like cartels, like big corridos is like off the charts right now like i could see corridos becoming really really mainstream soon man there's um when it comes to certain bars like right now i'm stuck on that 42 bar with um uh tony lawyer tony lawyer oh okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. he's dope yeah there's a lot of guys man that i've been no yeah yeah go for it yeah yeah um yeah you're right it's i think it's very interesting uh it's very cool uh that the whole norteño corrido culture seems to be expanding uh you know when i think back to like the 90s or when i was growing up 90s early 2000s you like young kids you really didn't see you know bumping corridos like that i mean at least where i grew up and so now I just, I feel like the, the youth, they, they have taken corridos, you know, a lot more. Um, and, the, and the different shows and everything like that, that include them. It's crazy. I think it, it definitely is on the rise, especially with these new, these new style corridos. Uh, uh, corrido tumbados, all this stuff, that, the new stuff that's coming out. It's appealing to a different generation, and I mean, it's working. It seems to be working because a lot of the artists are—they're having a lot of pull, you know. So I yeah. think it's pretty cool. Hell yeah, man! Even even throughout with the whole just pulling the raza up too, like a lot of Mexican mainstream is really pushing up, or in general, like the Hispanic community is coming up crazy. Even with like Selena, and then you got like soap operas, they, they convert from Spanish to English. Right, yeah, definitely. There's a, the Hispanic, the Hispanic culture in general is just growing every year in this country. Uh, because, you know, because the Hispanic population is also growing, so it's also gonna grow. And, but yeah, that's amazing, that's great. You know, all the more power to us, to the community, uh, I love to see stuff like that, where we take the, the reins and we say, you know what, I'm going to build something 
like me myself that's really cool and i support it a hundred percent i agree it's man like i said like just this year alone just the whole movement has been ridiculous like even like a page like fools gone wild they've, they've oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that those uh those fool pages are hilarious and then yeah, even his uh you you heard the album <laughs> excuse me you heard the album fools gone wild uh no no i haven't yeah even his merge b if you look it up little e has like these little toy dolls and stuff and they're on ebay right now going for like five hundred dollars oh wow yeah so i'm like yo it's just one of those things you know what i mean it's like yo it's crazy just talking no, yeah, about yeah. it <laughs> It's hilarious. It's, yeah, it's an amazing time to be alive, you know. I mean, 500 bucks for an item like that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but, man. But, I mean, but that's that's the power of these these uh groups of fans and, you know, people that are really into this that are willing to pay that much money. Tell me about it, bro. It's like Hopefully one day I get to be on one of those pages and stuff and be like, yo, you know, King Mexico. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> there you go, you know? I mean, hey, why not? Exactly. Even you, bro. Next thing you know, your name is ringing out there. You're getting reached out by Hollywood to produce some shows. And you have the whole animation, your whole storyline, but in a bigger, broad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the, actually, that's one of the goals of... Uh, well, one of my personal goals, you know, yeah. uh, to get to put a, a, a certain story, uh, make a feature film out of a certain story. So yeah. it'd be pretty interesting, you know. Do it up, bro. I could see it. There's so yeah. many storylines right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. A ton it's, of them. Poof. Especially right now, how it's going on in Mexico and that whole trying to take over and the power struggle that's going on right now. Which one piece, one piece that the U.S. moved and everything just became chaotic. Be like, for the last what two years has been main like. Yeah, main yeah, yeah de- it no, yeah, definitely. You're right. It's, I mean, it's been incredibly violent since the mid 2000s. Let's say, yeah. But it seems like recently, it's just the violence has ramped up, like way more and it just seems to be getting worse uh every year where the brutality like each group is just trying to outdo the other and how gruesome and how inhumane they can be towards their enemy and i mean i think it will get better eventually but for now it's just uh it's a it's a war in certain places yeah, it's a big yeah. Cause I've been following. It's like on uh, Vice. I was watching one of these cartels. Like Vice went in. It's like twenty two new cartels ha- have emerged. I'm like, wow. And everybody's trying to be the bigger and the baddest one. Right, right. But I'd like to uh, point this out though about yeah, yeah. when when uh, uh, a uh, company like Vice claims. There's 22 new cartels. And I guess the problem I have with that is that in my mind, a cartel is a transnational organization mm-hmm. that that has the power and the resources and money to transport large amounts of cocaine or any other drug internationally. Uh, you know, at great volume. Uh, but a lot of these groups, these new splinter groups that have emerged, they don't really have that. I don't, uh, they're more localized. They're more uh, uh, heavy on extortion, human trafficking, uh, these other organized crime uh, uh, areas of influence that the other groups used to to dominate, but now these tra- trafficking groups have also gotten into. 
And so some of these groups, maybe they're not really cartels, maybe they're just local organized crime groups with some reach into the US because uh, they may not have the source in South America for high volume tonnage quantity uh, loads of cocaine or, or uh, weed or something like that, but they do have the ability to grow sometimes heroin or make maybe a uh, fentanyl and then traffic that themselves into the border areas. Uh, but for the most part, they seem to be a very localized. And so I would say maybe not cartels, but uh, localized trafficking groups or trafficking families, maybe. I get it. Something more similar to like a gang, basically. Yeah, yeah, I would say that on that level. Well, maybe above a common street gang, but maybe not so much a, a full on cartel. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Or a growing base, a growing, maybe growing one day. It could. Definitely. I mean, there have been groups that began with only a few people and it just grew to be a monster. You know, and that definitely could happen. Any one of these groups have the ability to just play the right cards and one day end up being the top dog. So that's very possible. And talking about since you brought up weed, how do you feel about Mexico might be legalizing it? I think on the 15th or the 12th, they're about to, you know, bring it up to the courts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm 100% for it. I think that, you know, we got to try something new. The The drug war, all that money, all those lives lost. And drugs are as plentiful and as cheap as ever, everywhere. Yeah. And so we got to try new ideas. We sure do. And then America's in the middle between, if Mexico passes it, then America's left to start, you know, falling in line because Canada's already legalized. And if Mexico passes it through, then America needs to wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those uh. Uh, those countries are on the right path, you know, and the U.S. has to change. They have to wake up. I mean, I don't even think it's the whole country. I mean, I think most of the country is for it, but the problem seems to be uh, agencies like the DEA who will not change their opinion on classifying weed as a class one, I believe, drug. Yeah. Yeah. which is on the same level as heroin, which is uh, completely ridiculous. But, you know, uh, it's moving along. The movement to legalize everywhere is moving along and it can't be stopped. So sure you know, time will tell them. Especially CBD is like a big, a big breakthrough. Like there's a lot of people who are old, young, and, you know, vouch for CBD that helps them out. You know what I mean? With their pain, sleep, different types yeah, of, yeah you know here and there so you know we we all know we are on the path to it but i think the bigger picture with that with um like legalizing it is how does corporate america capitalizes on it i think that's once they find out how to capitalize on it i'm pretty sure moves would be made like asap oh definitely yeah definitely uh, um as soon as companies realize that weed legalization was a possibility, I mean, they they had to have been making plans from day one to how they were going to monopolize certain areas or be top dog in certain areas of the industry. And, and it's already starting. I mean, you have big companies now investing in certain cannabis or, or CBD companies. Um, but yeah, you're right. It, uh, it, it doesn't take too long before all these corporations come in and, you know, try to take over. Yeah. Cause but, this, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Just like states, you know, like Colorado is a huge example of what could be done. Once taxes came through, they actually had to give the residents of Colorado money 
more money because they pay too much in taxes. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, it's uh, there's way more benefits to legalization than there are cons. It's just that certain people, like I said, they just, for whatever reason they don't want this uh, the system to change and the way that certain drugs are are treated criminally and socially they don't want that to change to change uh, uh i mean i can make the argument that the dea at this point is like a, a a government jobs program basically because most of the population here does not want the drug war most of the population wants something different you know and it's really a lot of just certain politicians that are standing in the way of uh, accelerated legalization. You know, it's a perfect example of that <laughs> when we talk about this, comparing to gas cars. Remember back in the day, early 90s, people wanted yeah, to yeah. run on electric cars and water cars and corporate America's like, nah, we need gas, we need gas, we need gas. And then... right, right. Down the line, you got this man, Elon Musk created Tesla, and look at this now. Everybody wants to go EV. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And definitely. Then, it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, it's the um, lithium, and then there's a lot of countries who have it, and now we're trying to align ourselves to get that. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's. I guess, you know, the writing is on the wall in terms of where the future lies in and how people power their homes, how people power their cars, how people uh, use transportation. The green revolution is a real thing. It's, you know, people are moving away from fossil fuels. And in this day and age, with the technology that we can possess and that we can possibly possess in the future. It makes no sense to survive and to uh, work and just, you know, live in a society that still runs on this very dirty, just, you know, substance in the ground that pollutes and, and uh, does a lot of harmful things, you know, and it also is a big factor in wars so uh, maybe the green revolu revolution and all these new technologies that will make clean energy supposedly hopefully uh will will lessen that yeah side fact bro a lot of cars next year are going to be slower than previously production i mean previously product ugh. previously made cars are going to be less horsepower because of gas because they passed some bill. So basically, of you getting this 500 horsepower car, it's not going to be no more example. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, certain items, I'm sure, are going to be lost in this whole transition that, that uh, we're probably going to go into. And so, yeah, some of those products, I'm pretty sure that they're, they're just not going to make it. Um, but you know do you like gas car or are you with the ev uh i mean i like both you know but at the same time i guess you know it is what it is with the whole uh you know where everything's moving yeah but it, yeah i do i do like the the gas certain gas cars um i always thought that the the classic uh american muscle cars were just like beautiful, you know, uh, the GT, uh, what else? I always like the Mustang. I mean, the Mustang wasn't really a muscle car, I think, but I mean, still all these classic gas cars that are just not going to be made anymore. It's going to be pretty sad. Definitely. Yeah. I always tell people there's something about a car when you hit that, when you hit it and you hear the engine go. Right, 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 right. And you and you smell the gases or burning tires. There's something about it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you yeah, see yeah, it, definitely. Like, 
you see a Tesla, you don't really hear engine roar. You don't really hear. No, no, no. <laughs> you just hear ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and they had to make the noise so people could hear the car coming, which is crazy. So technically, right, right. it doesn't make no <laughs> type of noise. Right, right, right. No, yeah, I get it. It's, uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, a break from what people are used to, you know? Yeah, definitely. Growing up in the 90s, you know what I mean? No, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah, definitely. I mean, I come from the era of you had to wind up or wind down the uh, the uh, the uh, the window, you know. Oh, <laughs> I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To pull in some muscle behind that, but yeah. I'm, the other and... thing I got in the car, right? Sorry to cut you off. I got in the um, car, right? Yeah. And I see uh, the winder to bring the window down. Mind you, this is like a 2016. Has to be. It's a new car, brand new new car. I don't remember the model, but it was hilarious because I had her actually roll the window down. I was like, do they even make these anymore? With that said, I, when I rolled it down, I couldn't believe it. A small little car, yeah, yeah. too. I was like, really, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's always a it's always a trip to to get into an older car, and it's just a different different uh, layout, you know. It's crazy. Even the feel, like when you drive an older car, is is you feel the. It's like people talk about, oh, you feel the car, you feel the road and stuff, and you really do. You oh really yeah, do. yeah, no, yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been, uh, yeah, in a couple cars from some of these type cars. Yeah, you definitely feel the road, definitely. Like for me, if I could get a car, if I had the fundings, I would get an E thirty. That's like my gray grail car is a e30 uh that's a um m3 bmw okay right right that's yeah, um yeah, yeah. probably saw it in what paid in full and he's paid riding in, in the full. e30 yeah classic classic yes all right first of all that's a classic car and second of all that's an even more classic movie <laughs> yo Paid in full is one of those movies you could watch over and over and over again. Oh yeah, uh, the the whenever I see it, it, never fails. I always get hungry as hell watching the uh, the 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 first scene when they're in the hotel and they're eating Chinese food. They're always eating Chinese food. We're making buckets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was that, the Chinese food. <laughs> word. That's that's real New York shit right there, bro. Kid, yeah, kid definitely. Night. That's real New York. I remember growing up and going to the Chinese store, and they were dealing in my Chinese store. Like hands down, I was probably like what, eight years old, but I knew what was going on. Like them brown paper little, homemade, you know, yeah, yeah, deals and shit. Everybody's chilling in the chinos, and I'm like, yo, I already know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, yo, at yeah. the end of the day, I always tell people, bro, growing up and that shit made me stronger. But at the same time, I would not want to relive that shit because it was crazy, B. No, 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 definitely. Um, I uh, I grew up in New York. Oh, dope. and yeah, and uh, yeah, man, I I remember some crazy days, crazy crazy times. I mean, I was never like really. Like in the street, like that, you know. I mean, people knew me and stuff, but you know, there were there was a local gang there, and I remember one summer they were really going at it with this other group, and I remember you at that summer, uh, me and my brother, we had a little gig where we used to go out and uh, to this little cleaning job. Yeah. And so I remember that summer in particular, they were going at it because we would get up early in the morning and the cops would be out there. And they would just be a bunch of bullet casings all over the place. And they would just be marking everything that happened last night. And that would be constant. That would be a couple times that summer. Damn. A couple people like that were killed outside uh, our residence, you know, shit like that. It's uh, 
the nineties and the two thousands, it was a crazy era. I mean, definitely. Yeah, if you're from New York, you never picked that first apartment that was on the first floor. You're like, nah, B, I'm going up. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. No, hell no. Yeah, man. I don't know what to say, man. It's like knowing that you 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 know you from out here and stuff, it's it's crazy because people don't understand. It was wild, even Halloween. You know what I mean? Like you'll get it sounds crazy right now. You get a bunch of eggs and shit. You fling it at people. You go on the bus. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you see people <laughs> doing that shit all the time. And you thought it was natural as a kid. You were like, yo. Yeah, yeah. You, think, no, yeah. you don't see no harm. As you get older, it's like, yo, what the hell was I doing back then? Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like that was, that was some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the store. And the guy's like, nah, we ain't selling no eggs to no kids. Like, why, wow, bro? I need to make breakfast. Like, nah, be you be throwing them kids <laughs> outside and you're gonna come in here and throw them eggs later on. Yeah, yeah. They know what you guys are up to. Yeah, so yeah, man. I mean, it's just uh, different, you know what I mean? It's just a different time. It was it was wild. Yeah. And currently, uh, right now, people are trying to bring it back, but I'm like, yo, there's no necessity. It's not the same. The circumstances no. are way different. No, no, and they, and they, you shouldn't. It shouldn't be brought back. I mean, it can be praised and it can be celebrated, you know. But I don't think it should be like brought back, back, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 a, a, it's a nostalgia. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a story. It's like a fairy tale. You just don't want to relive that stuff. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's in history, and it had its time to shine, and it did. And you know, that's that, I guess. Yeah, we just gotta move forward. No, definitely, yeah, yeah. Growth, growth, and to it, twenty twenty is all about some weird, crazy shit, but it's also about growth. Word and opening your mind. If twenty twenty was something, I would say twenty twenty is like a LSD or a mushroom or peyote. It just opened up your eyes. Oh man, I've never done that. <laughs> it opened up your eyes like yo look at the done, world uh, in a different eye have you done peyote nah b i always wanted to um what you call it when i was in mexico uh-huh i didn't know what it was and i could easily just like be like oh let me taste this if i would have tasted that's what it was i never knew as i got older mm-hmm. i found out it's like oh yeah all that you saw back there was peyote i'm like really it's like yeah i was like wow I was younger. As an adult, you know what I mean? Yeah, People yeah. People say don't trip because, you know, you're older. But I guess if you find somebody who does, like, micros and stuff, then you're good. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, just dip your toe in the pool, you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, I guess. I've never done it, but. I know, right? We're, like, over here, like, try it. Like, yeah, we'll figure it out one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's you know, it's, it, it's nothing but to just try it, I guess, and then if it's great, it's great. If you if it makes you all paranoid and shit, then then you know to lessen the dosage and take right. her from there. Yeah, and have a great trip. Damn right. Yeah. But yeah, man. Um. So yeah, you said you grew up uh you grew up in New York. Yeah, bro. Born and raised out here. Mm, okay, okay. Nothing. And your family, you are your family is your family from Mexico? Yeah, yeah. Family's from Mexico. Okay. So I'm like okay. first generation and stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so that's why probably I'm close to the roots and stuff, and I'm like probably like into the whole corrido movement now. Cause I grew up with it. With so the whole with the Latin Norteños and stuff, all that, all that stuff, Gumbias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was on heavy on rotation and stuff. Yeah, um, I grew up with with corridos too. Uh, my dad, you know, played the the classics from uh, Los Tigres and Carlos y Jose, people like that. Uh, but. Actually, when I was younger, I didn't really, it didn't really uh, speak to me, I guess, or catch my attention. And then later on in life, 
when I was in my early 20s, I guess, uh, I, I rediscovered corridos and I started to look more deeply into the lyrics and not just like listen to how it sounded, but also look at the lyrics. And I found that a lot of these corridos are just very poetic. You know, they, there's a lot of thought that goes into the the placement of the words and everything. And yeah, I became a massive fan and I just delved right into it. And I got into all types of groups and, you know, but yeah, man, corridos. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that is, has a, has a different uh, taste for everyone, you know. Where even Antonio Aguilar had one, you know that, right? Uh, corrido. Yeah, he had one for um, if I'm not mistaken, for what's his name? I'm trying to remember his name right now. Oh, uh, are you talking about Lamberto Quintero? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a, a there. You go. It's a classic right there. Yeah, it's like oh wow. And like you said, as you get older, you figure out most of these lyrics and then you start going through these artists that you was listening to as a kid. It was like, oh, shit, this is what it is. Yeah. Like, hey, yo, you put in two and two together. So it's like a lot of these famous singers yeah. were actually, you know, getting paid to make these songs, too. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, a lot of these singers get paid, too. Yeah. To write even, these songs and perform. Even the new ones. Yeah. Just look at, yeah, um, sure. which is funny. Sorry to cut you off. The um, Breaking Bad. Remember they had a corrido for Breaking Bad, which is hilarious when they had it on the show. I was like, look at this. Look how far we have come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That I remember that. It's When I saw that, I was like, wow, it's, uh, it's incredible. I mean, they actually put this corrido on American television. From an uh, from an not from some little like studio group that they hired, like yeah. an actual an actual authentic badass group. Yeah, I was like, look at this man. Times is changing, you know. It's yeah, a good thing, you know what I mean. Like we said from yeah. before, it's a good thing. All all is good, you know. That's what it is. It's evolution evolution that exactly 2020 evolution is uh has never been more within reach for a lot of people i believe i don't know how i feel how about how you feel about this vaccine i have mixed feelings about this vaccine to be honest um i'm i don't consider myself you know a uh what do you call those people um no vax anti anti vaxxers whatever yeah i don't consider myself one of those people but i mean i don't know i just have a lot of shady shit about this administration and the incoming administration and i don't know man it's just i'm debating whether we should take it or not i'm with you man it's one of those things i want to see what happens first and you know in England, how they doing next year? Right, right, right. Only thing I, I mean, play it safe. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it, you know, if it, if they do these trials, more trials, and you know, they actually release it to general population in other countries, and it seems to be going okay, and people are not like fucking getting these weird side effects or whatever. Then yeah, I would take it because I mean I'd rather take that than fucking stay in the house all the time. I have to go through more lockdowns and shit. But you know, at the same time, I'm also very aware that the government doesn't always have the best interests of the people. Sure it doesn't. So yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, you hear about the aliens? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, there seems to be some kind of alien news popping up every so often, and I very much enjoy it because it seems to, I don't know, it seems like one day we're going to get close to that one day when the president just steps out in front of the cameras and he's like, you know what, 
All right, they're real, okay? They're real. And he's just going to, like, admit it, you know? Because the evidence is so overwhelming and shit. And it's like, yo, they right here, look, bro. Homies right here, yo. Just stand up, let them know who you are. Yeah. Might as well. Ancient aliens, bro, will come true. And they were like, oh, shit, the history our channel was on to something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love watching that series. I love watching it. It's I know it's a lot of you know a lot of times it's BS you know, uh, but it's just like interesting. I don't know. Nah, I'm with you, bro. I watched that shit too. Yeah, yeah. The guy with the crazy ass hair looking like Kramer and shit all the time talking about. Do you know? I'm like, all right, B, you got me right now. Yeah. No, definitely. It's a. Uh... I don't know. I don't know. I think there's much to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an entertaining show. That's all it is. It's entertaining. It, as we can't help it. it. It's well, a guilty know, pleasure. It's a guilt. Yeah, exactly. Bingo, right there. It's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> you know. You checked out yeah. that Selena series by any chance? No, no, no. I, I've heard of it. Uh, I mean, I've heard of it, but I haven't had a chance to check it out. I'm going to check it out, though. Uh, it's not what, bad. Have bro. you? Oh, you like it? Yeah, but it seems like it was. Um, they try to tone it down, and they try to get it somewhat whitewashed. I'm sorry to use those words, but I have to. Right, right, right. right. No, I get it. Uh, that that's pretty. Uh, that happens often with Hollywood and all these different production companies. You know. A lot of whitewashing. Yeah. And her pops was in it. You know that. And her pops is always trying to paint this picture of the family. You know what I mean? But Oh, uh, the, the the family was involved? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, you know, they definitely were involved. I mean, aren't the, their family is pretty famous for being like hard on people when they mention their daughter's name, I think. Or their, yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to give it a look, you know. Uh, sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's you know, it's entertaining. So, yeah, yeah it sounds interesting. I mean, I fuck with the music. She's Selena's a legend, you know, and yeah, definitely big legend. Man. B. R.I.P. Selena. R.I.P. Indeed. Um. Oh, I was uh. In light of the whole uh, legalization thing, do you smoke by any chance? Nah, just CBD, B. Just CBD. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Wink, wink. wink. <laughs> no, I'm saying uh, I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, it's just uh, my general interest, you know. How about you, bro? CBD. Nice. Yeah. It works out, um, you know what I mean? You know, you rub that shit on your knees if they hurt, or your shoulder. And it works. I don't give a damn what nobody says. You find the might, the right um dosage, and it works. You you take one, you go to sleep like an angel and shit. Be you wake up the next morning all refreshed. Absolutely. My quick little story. My my brother made a CBD uh, uh, rubbing oil or whatever you call it to to. Uh, for our mom, she she was having knee problems, and he made it for her, and she used it on her knee, and it really helped. It it really does work. Oh, talking about that. So, since you said the knee and the remedies, you know, back in the so growing up, right? Mm hmm. Alcohol con marijuana. You ever heard of it? Hmm. Alcohol con marijuana. Yeah, literally what it is. Okay. So you get a bunch of stems and a bunch of bud and you pop it inside the alcohol and you mm -hmm. let it marinate. Okay. And then basically, yeah, it's basically cannabis alcohol. So this comes from my great, -great grandmother B. And it used to, you know, she used to have it in the crib. I'm like, what the hell is this? As I got older, she's like, oh, yeah, that's what it is, um, is, is weed. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, it's good for your joints and shit. 
incredible. To tell me I that, mean, bro. And and when she said that, were you like a little shocked, or were you like, oh, cool? I was like, I, I was shocked. Like what? Like <laughs> if I if I got into details how it came over here, bro, you'd be like, what? I'm like, just remember, this is early '90s, b. <laughs> Right, 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 right. <laughs> I was no, like, you didn't. yeah. So now that I think I'm on, like, God damn. So, all right, cool. Whatever you had to do, you had to do. But you didn't know anybody. You know what I mean? She was she right. was from Rancho. You know what I mean? Rancho. So you don't know anybody. It's like. They just know that it works. Exactly. They just know it works and stuff. You know, and I, uh, there's a lot of things, you know, they, they have some. People from a rancho, there's a, they have a lot of knowledge, you know, and it's very interesting. Very interesting. Nah, I agree with that, bro. Like, just, you know, just happens to be a conversation right now about it. But she was um, one generation off. Like, basically, she was like conquers, you know what I mean? Like, her, her mom's was, you know, part of that whole revolution stuff, which is crazy when you really like when she used to tell us the stories i'm like yo like my the, uh, mexican not even off. mexican revolution yeah like when it comes down to like the the spaniards coming over and the french like she actually interacted with that stuff like as a baby or as oh, a wow. child in other words yeah bro i was like damn so her telling me these stories is like wow so really like yeah my oh, bloodline is pretty close you know what i mean yeah wow that's uh that's history right there yeah so that's why when you said ranch i'm like yeah she used to tell us stuff bro like she would talk about like all oh, the the stars and this and you know the moon i'm like huh and i used to be like i don't get it but she's like Yo, now, this is, it is what it is and it's like all right cool it works like bones, you... like cracking bones and stuff bro putting bones in place and shit like that Let's oh say, yeah, let's yeah. Say, yeah. Oh, you heard about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've heard she about. She was, she was with that shit. B. She was like, "Oh, your bone right here. Look, give me your bone." Plop. She pop it in place. I'm like, "Oh shit." It's incredible what they can do. The some of the old timers, uh, they can just pop a bone right into place. Yeah, you'd be like, "How the hell?" And then we got technology who can't even figure it out to this day. Yeah, right. I mean, people go to the chiropractor for years to maybe try to get some some uh some pain reduction for their back and you know you have people out here that have this old time knowledge of just popping up a, a bone right into its proper place and boom you're you're pretty good a westero that's what it's called in english would be a boner yeah 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 that's yeah. what it's called the Westero. I remember that. Yeah. And I used to be like, yo, what the hell is this? And now looking back, I'm like, damn, I should have learned. I should have picked some of this stuff up. Oh man, you would uh you'd be making bank. Word. Tell me about it, B. Like, like how you know oh, how yeah. to do this? I'm like, it's an ancient thing. And it is. It really is. Yeah, man. Hey man, um, I loved uh, the combo was badass. It's pretty good combo actually, um, but unfortunately I have to get going. Nah, that's cool, B. That's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whenever you have time again, hit me up. We link up, and if anything, you know, you want to let anybody know anything that you know the people out there know to follow you and stuff. Yeah. Um, you can find me on, on Instagram at Gasquillo underscore. Um, uh, I got the YouTube channel, of course. Uh, most people know me through that. And you can send me through either avenue, YouTube or Instagram. You can send me messages, whatever, if you're uh, for any kind of business ideas or uh, arrangements you would like to talk about. Um, so yeah, hit me up anytime. And also, oh yeah, I like to mention that I'm looking for a talent manager, uh, so to speak. Not exactly a talent manager, but a talent manager, I guess you could say. So anyone interested in that, hit me up and you know, let's talk.
All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to the King Mexico podcast. And like always, don't forget, life's a joke and y'all take it easy. Get easy. Get easy. Get easy. Get easy. Get easy.